I'm Diane Rogers and welcome back to my kitchen. Today I want to teach you how to truss and roast an air chilled chicken. Now these air chilled chickens, this is a huge find. Costco now has started to carry air chilled chickens. What's an air chilled chicken? Not a lot of people know. I've been cooking these for quite some time and they're really tasty. Uh, the tastiest chicken that I've ever had because they don't have retained water that you're paying for. And so the air chill versus a normal chicken is they have to go through series of air chilled chambers, blows cold air on them to chill them down within four hours to below 40 degrees. In the regular process uh, after slaughter, all the chickens go into this pool that is got bleach in it, chlorine, whatever, and who knows what else. And that is the retained water that's in the chicken. If you like a chicken that tastes like chicken and like a crisp skin on a chicken, air chilled is the only way to go. And I'll tell you what, once you cook an air chilled chicken and eat it, you'll never go back to the regular chickens ever. I took the chicken out of the bag, gave it a quick rinse, and now I want to pat it dry. To roast this, you want to truss it, because what the trussing does is it compacts the chicken nice and tight to let it roast nice and even. It really is a wonderful thing to do. I trust all my chickens now because it just roasts so much better. What I would do if you've never had an air chilled chicken is to get an air chilled and just salt and pepper it, period. Truss it, roast it, and taste the chicken. Then, after you do that a couple of times, you'll probably want to add some seasonings. So some of my favorite seasonings is one of many, garlic, fresh garlic, rosemary, salt and pepper, then I'll put a little olive oil on it. Now the garlic is kind of interesting. Here's a way to do it. You can use garlic powder, of course. Actually, I'm slicing the garlic into slivers. And what we're gonna do is take the chicken and put the sliver under the skin. You can see what I'm up to. I'm taking this and peeling the skin back a little bit, just run your finger under it, and put this sliced garlic under the skin. And then the flavor will kind of seep in there. It's really good. Then on the bottom of the chicken, the same thing, lift the skin from where the Pope's nose is and put a few pieces in the leg and in the thigh on both sides and then we'll do around by the wings. I like to put the fresh garlic under the under the skin of the chicken so that the skin of the chicken protects it from burning. You can use granulated garlic you know if you're in a hurry it works but this is really good and it's really easy and now I rub the garlic around on the chicken breast after you stuff it under the skin. Then I'm going to stuff one more down or a little bit more down closer to where the thigh meets the breast portion. Alright, now, now what I want to do and to make this clean up a little bit easier, of course we'll clean the board well. I'm going to salt and pepper this really well on the bottom and the top and all the way around. Then we want some fresh pepper all over. I sort of like fresh pepper so I tend to use quite a bit of it. And then I'm going to use a little rosemary. This is just because 
it's an easy go-to but there's so many different seasonings you can use other good seasoning mixes that go well with chicken if you have an ethnic market like uh, Lebanese market anywhere close to you there are different varieties of za'atar seasoning and what it is is a thyme based seasoning with sesame in it however what the the difference between the different za'atars there's a Palestinian a Jordanian plain za'atar there's all sorts of mixes um, might be one might have a little sumac one might have a little coriander anyway they're really good I'll show you when I get my hands a little clean some of the different mixes I found and it's a really good seasoning for bread and for chicken for all sorts of things so here we have our chicken garlic under the skin salt pepper and rosemary and now I want to truss it so to truss it you're going to take the chicken and we're going to cut off, oh, what, a couple of feet anyway of heavy duty twine, cotton twine, tying the twine around the legs and then pulling that tight, then taking the cotton twine and putting it down behind the leg and the thigh to the back and you're going to pull it to the back of the chicken under the neck and by doing that you're going to be able to pull this I'll turn this around and pull it see how it puffs up a little bit that's because it's being pulled nice and tight then if you cut it long enough you'd be able to take the twine again and then tie it off under the Pope's nose. And it really does make a big difference in the way that the chicken cooks, a lot more even, compact. So then trim up the twine and you have a lovely, nice, compact chicken. Look pretty too looks good on a serving platter so now it's as simple as that it's going to go into the roasting pan now I picked a metal pan you could use glass but I like to make a pan gravy and I'm going to show you how to do that when this gets out of the oven okay however with glass you can't put a glass pan on the stove top to make a nice pan sauce so anyway into a metal roaster or if I were just doing the chicken and I didn't want to mess around with the vegetables put it in a saute pan, one that's just big enough to hold the chicken. So it comes out really good in a pan sauce. It's fast and easy and you'll see why when we get to that. All right, now what we're gonna do is, I wanna cook this with a little wine. So we got some salt, pepper, some garlic under the skin, rosemary crumbled, and a little wine. I'm putting the wine in the bottom of the pan. I put a little bit of olive oil on the chicken, the potatoes, the onions, and the carrots. And it's everything is well seasoned. Now I didn't want to pour wine over the chicken because I didn't want to rinse off the seasonings that I have put in there. So anyway, I'm going to put this in the oven and it's going to roast for about one hour at 400 degrees. Well, my cute little chicken is now out of the oven. And this, this air chilled chicken looks really good, doesn't it? The vegetables are perfect, perfectly knife tender, onions perfect, and the chicken itself, see how nicely it's browned? This took a little bit longer actually because the weight was a little bit bigger than the um, chickens that I usually use this was close to three and three quarter pounds a lot of the air chilled chickens are three to three and a half pounds anyway so it did take a little bit longer and the way I know that is because I can jiggle the legs and they jiggle really easy and if you're not comfortable with that 
use a thermometer and put the thermometer in between the leg and the thigh just on the side of the breast parallel and it should read I like to pull it out at about 165 because it keeps cooking and then if you are lucky enough to have an oven with a thermometer built into the oven then you can put the thermometer in the chicken first and the oven mine anyway shuts off when it reaches the temperature that you program it for so anyway now comes the patience of letting this sit for about 15 minutes before you start ripping into it or carving it I should say so I'm going to be patient and this is just going to sit here and I'm not going to raid any of this wonderful skin or take any of these wings off I'm going to wait something to do while you're waiting for the chicken to rest a little bit is get your platter whatever you want to put the chicken in and the vegetables on and warm it because you don't want the hot chicken going to a cold platter because it'll chill it down so you might as well keep it warm especially on the first day when you cook it that's just a little spoiler alert a restaurant trick if you were to put it right on the plates what I like to do because my cupboards are on an outside wall and it gets kind of cold in the winter is take my plates and I always warm those with some hot water too so that they feel nice and warm and then whatever hot anything you're putting on it doesn't chill down instantly as soon as it hits the plate. Alright while you're waiting for your chicken to stand a little bit if you like to make a thicker more gravy like sauce here's what to do this is really easy it's an equal portion of soft butter and flour and you can make this and have it just keep it on your counter for later use if you don't use it all but you take the equal portion butter and flour and then I like to do this with a fork because it's the easiest in a bowl you're going to mash could have gotten a bigger one holy cow uh, mash the butter into the flour then once we get the pan deglazed about a tablespoon or so will go into the bottom of the pan to thicken it slightly in French it's called a beurre manet and it's a really easy thickener for sauces and I do this a lot around um, Thanksgiving for making turkey gravy it's perfect for making a pan sauce there you have a nice mix on it and we'll just put that aside we want to keep this at room temperature time to get the chicken out of the pot so here's the easiest way to do that we're going to I'm going to take it off this burner and we're going to use a spatula and tongs probably just because that's what I'm used to and go under the chicken and out it comes God, isn't that gorgeous oh it's so pretty then we want and then here's everything that I'm going to make the sauce out of this nice dark foam on the bottom of the pan we're going to take the couple of onions out I'll put those in the back of this we're going to take potatoes out oh this is going to make a great gravy I had a couple of garlic cloves extra that I had sliced up just a few so I sort of pitched them in the bottom of the pan and they're nice and soft I guess they're going to be part of the sauce except boy they sure are good to eat just as they are with all the chicken juice on them anyway don't these vegetables look wonderful look at that beautiful color on the bottom all right so now we're going to put this on the corner turn on the heat and now the magic will happen so the pans warm back up again what I'm going to do to get this beautiful stuff off the bottom of the pan now that 
it's sizzling slightly, is put about a quarter cup of water in the bottom of the pan. Actually, it's going to be more like a half a cup. And then we'll take the flat spatula and we're going to scrape the bottom of the pan while this comes up to a boil. And you want to go all the way around the pan and get everything off the bottom. This is where all the flavor is going to come from. I got, I took out a bottle of sherry, even though we cooked this in wine that reduced beautifully. I sort of like cherry sauces with chicken. It's pretty good. So I have a nice cream sherry. I'm going to add a splash of that to these pan drippings after I finish getting them off the side in the bottom of the pan. And then we'll thicken it. But now what I want to do is use the spoon to get around the side of the pan. This is where the spatula won't get it. And I want all that stuff. Pan sauces are so easy and it's such a fundamental part of cooking in the kitchen when you do any kind of meats, especially, that it's good to know just how to do it. So you can see that this is simmering nicely. We're going to reduce it. By making a pan sauce, that also it accomplishes two things. One, you have a great gravy sauce, whatever you want to call it, for whatever you're making. Two, it's so much easier to clean the pan because you're cleaning the pan now over the heat, which is easier than cleaning it in the sink. So for whatever that's worth, keep that one in mind. If I had any chicken stock left over from anything, I would add, I would deglaze this with chicken stock. That really would be better. But since I haven't made chicken stock for a while, oh well, it's just had to be water. Now, okay, what to do with the carcass? Save your bones, save the skin if you're not gonna eat it. Put it into a pot, let it simmer overnight. In the morning you'll have chicken stock for whatever that's worth. Same thing with the rotisserie chicken. If you don't want to cook your own and you go to the store, go get a rotis rotisserie chicken. Take the meat off the bone and the skin off the meat while it's warm. Put it in a pot. Simmer it over very, very low heat all night with or without your stock vegetables. And you have instant broth to strain off in the morning to put either in the refrigerator or keep the fat on it to seal it and then it keeps for actually quite some time a good couple of months until you break the seal of the fat and the reason I put the skin in the pot to render is because I want the fat from that all right so this is reduced by about 25 percent now and still simmering so in goes a splash of sherry. We're going to bring that back up to a boil. And then, oh boy, does that smell good. I love the smell of sherry. Just love it. Sherry goes really good with mussels too. Anyway, now to thicken slightly, I'm going to take a little well, happens to be a fork, but a spoonful of this, and swirl it into this pan. And the butter melts, and you'll see in a minute, it will start, it's starting to thicken right now. As the butter melts, then you have a thickened sauce. And I kind of don't think, we'll know in a minute, I don't think it's going to take any more than that because, like I say, I'm not making a thick gravy, just a nice pan sauce that coats the spoon. It's the consistency of heavy cream, just slightly whipped. Isn't that pretty? It's gorgeous. Now, 
I want to season this with a little bit of salt, a little bit of fresh pepper, and we're stirring this up. Pan's hot. I'm going to spoon some into the bowl until, there it goes, now I can pour it. I use a rubber spatula to clean the bottom of the pan because you get quite a bit more out of it. Enough for another person anyway. There's just one more thing that I want to add, and that is carefully drain off the juice that's accumulated from the bottom of the chicken. And presto, pan sauce. Doesn't that look wonderful? I have to try it. Mm, wonderful. Just wonderful. All right, on to a warmed plate. What I'm doing is snip the butcher twine off of the chicken so we can carve it easier. And now I'm not going to carve the whole thing because it's just my little doggy and myself and I don't want it to dry out which is what would happen if I did carve it. But I do want to show you what we've got so far. Now, I'm going to take a leg off. Chloe always gets the legs. I, myself, like the thighs. Wow, doesn't that look good? Moist, tender, juicy. That is just heaven. I swear these air chilled chickens, once you try one, I guarantee you will not go back to regular chickens ever because they are just so good. So how's that for a pretty little dinner? Now to try a taste. Chloe's so jealous. Oh my God, this is so tender. Air chilled chickens, I can't tell you more. Air chilled chickens are the best. They're just so good. Dunder moist. You really can't screw them up. The skin comes up nice and crispy, sticky. Tastes like a chicken. I like to buy, for whatever it's worth, I like to buy the smallest chickens in the package as possible. And I can't believe that Costco is selling for $1.29 a pound. But they are, so might as well take advantage of it. Anyway, I hope you try that, and I hope you get sold on air chilled chickens as much as I have, and look for more episodes to come. Thanks for joining me. All right, I'm back. These are the best darn chickens. You really need to try these. Now, I want to also add that the chickens that are air chilled say so right on the package, and I noticed that the print air chilled is getting a little bit bigger too because I think people are starting to take notice and they're available in quite a few stores so worth seeking out you really need to try it because it's good pick yourself up a bottle of cream sherry while you're out and even if you just do the simple salt and pepper to the chicken roast it for about an hour hour and a half depends on the size and see what you think don't forget to trust the chicken too.